London Fashion Week. And the beautiful people are out in force. For the serious fashionista, it's the place to see and be seen. It might be glamorous, but it's impossible not to notice how thin many of the models are. And right now, behind the bright lights and makeup, debate is raging in the fashion world over the issue of ultra skinny models. I just think it's too simplistic to blame fashion. Fashion is part of the problem, but it's not the whole problem. These models travel the world following the fashion shows, but last year there was disaster. Young Brazilian model Ana Carolina Reston died of anorexia. Her death created a storm of bad publicity for the fashion world. One of Australia's leading designers, Alice McCaw, is showing her latest collection here in London. But she says all the controversy about super slim models is a media beat up. When we talk about this whole body image issue, uh, you are focusing on the problem. It's like it, it's sensationalism to a to a degree. Oh, girl dies of anorexia. Oh, another girl dies of anorexia. Oh, headlines, headlines, sell papers. <laughs> New York was really thin this season. Like, they were taking a lot of 14, 15 year old girls, so everybody was super, super skinny. I mean, model has to be beauty and the body and the shape. And sexual, too. Sexual. 14, 15, they have nothing. Yeah. I mean, it's true. I think it's wrong. I think it's absolutely wrong. I think all the girls are a size zero right now, too, is because they're just young girls. They're all 15, 16 years old. And everybody was that thin when they were when they were 14 or 15. They didn't start puberty yet. On the catwalk is Marina Jamison from Spain. She started modeling 10 months ago at 19 years of age. When I caught up with her later, she described just how cutthroat modeling can be. Most people don't know that you're you're out here like luchando, which is like battling the field <laughs> to get to the top. <laughs> Some agencies prefer younger girls, like 13, 14. Uh, the youngest girl I've seen was 11, and she was from Brazil. All of them are mostly chosen because they look fresh, and they're, ve they're like virgins, like they have virgin hair, like nobody's ever touched their hair color or haircut or face or... Is there a pressure to try and be thinner? There is a bit of pressure because there's always going to be a skinnier model and a more beautiful model. Following the death of the Brazilian, everyone's talking of banning so-called size zero models, approximately the size of a healthy seven-year-old. That's a problem for Marina because she's size zero. Um, I saw in the newspaper yesterday that uh, London decided to not use size zero models like in Madrid, but um, I don't know if it's like for sure or not. You know? For this season, so. Marina needn't I mean. worry. <laughs> Although the organizers of London Fashion Week insist no size zero models will be used, there's no enforcement. The industry prefers self-regulation, so Marina when can do her thing can see bones, and says you know, skinny is beautiful. Natural, like this. If you can tell by their face that they're like sick, you know, that is not good. They, they need hospital help, but if it's like so many girls are so skinny in the show and they're so beautiful, you know, with their face and like it's, it's just naturally lean. 
While they may be naturally lean, the World Health Organization classifies many of these models as seriously underweight. It says anyone below a body mass index, or BMI, of 18 is too thin. Marina's BMI is just 16.97. Too thin for the World Health Organization, but acceptable here in London. But at Madrid Fashion Week, Marina is banned from the catwalks because she's too skinny. Unlike London, the Madrid fashionistas are concerned about the message emaciated models send to Spanish teenagers. Models were getting skinnier and skinnier, and we ourselves didn't realize until one day we said, well, there's six million on television watching it. Most of them youngsters, teenagers. We don't want those teenagers to think that that excessive slimness is a model of uh, beauty. After protests from parents that girls and young women were copying the models and developing eating disorders, the Fashion Week organisers, with the Madrid Regional Government, banned underweight females from the runway. But Spain's Ministry of Health and Consumer Affairs has gone even further. Come in, please. Angelas Haras Caballero, the Director General of Consumer Affairs, is in charge of measuring Spanish women from the age of 12 to 70 to find out the real shape of the Spanish woman. It's a national initiative. The plan is to measure about 10,000 women from across the country, and the results will be released early next year. They're also collaborating with manufacturers and designers to determine a universal sizing system. <laughs> que existan modelos de belleza saludable para la sociedad y para las mujeres y los eh, diseñadores y cómo se llama estilistas y toda la sociedad comprenda que que lo saludable es bello una mujer real de real woman eh, with hell is is beautiful It's obvious that the designers here have embraced models with curves. In the audience tonight is Agatha Ruiz de la Prada, one of the country's top designers. It, it's very nice that Spain has been the first country in the world to take a decision as hard as this one. I think it's a very clever and very intelligent because uh, uh, the health is a hundred times more important than the image. I think we are in a period of, la of the history that uh, image is taking too, is becoming too much important and that's a very silly thing, no? Now I am very much interested in ¿cómo se llaman los adolescentes? Teens. In teens. Being a mother of a teenage daughter has helped shape Agatha's opinions on the debate. That's, uh, that's Cosima, my daughter. She's 16. Uh, thanks God she don't have uh, problems with anorexia. But some of her friends are beginning to have uh, little obsessions about not eating and things like that. Why is that? Well, mostly because um, they're really obsessed with fashion, they read lots of magazines and, well, you see in the media most people who are famous are really skinny and big designers only make clothes for, like, small sizes, so they feel that to get famous they, like, need to be skinny. Madrid's ban on skinny models has rocked the fashion world. Now Milan is measuring body mass index and demanding a medical certificate from models to prove they're healthy. 
And if we are going to try and fix this issue, and I hope that we can, um, we need to look at a much, much broader picture about why we value thinness to, the, to this degree. Fashion writer and novelist Maggie Alderson has travelled the international circuit for almost two decades. She says Western culture is at fault and we are all complicit in this thinness conspiracy. We all, we all have to look into ourselves because we are all part of the problem. We all buy into it. So it's up to all of us to say no to Barbie, no to Disney, no to the Pussycat Girls, no to the thin actresses in Hollywood. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon, but any little steps we can take towards that would be good. While society may have to address its obsessions, Maria Campoy is an example that the Spanish initiatives are paying off. She was rejected by Madrid last season for having a low body mass index, so decided to beef up to fit the new guidelines. El que mi nombre estuviera en todas partes y se cuestionara que eh, una de las cinco modelos rechazadas en Cibeles había sido porque podía estar enferma o no daba un índice de masa corporal que pedían. Maria Campoy worked out in a gym for the first time in her life to build some muscle mass. She also thought that doing a nude photo shoot would prove she was healthy. Sin ropa no puedes engañar a nadie. Entonces, como se cuestionaba si estaba enferma o no estaba enferma, eh, así no engañas. Y pues si tenían alguna duda, eh, la revista me apoyó y me dijo, por supuesto, mm, me lo plantearon y pensé que fue buena idea y han gustado mucho. Have you thought about traveling abroad like London Fashion Week or Paris, where BMI is not an issue, it's not a problem, there's no limit, there's no ban? No, eh, es mi país. Eh, yo he trabajado en Milán, he estado viviendo en Milán y ahora estoy aquí. Eh, aquí tengo otros proyectos de televisión, compagino un poco, he estado haciendo televisión, compagino un poco el mundo de la moda con la televisión. Y si son las normas, yo las acepto porque apoyo el fondo de todo esto. Having embraced the new guidelines, Maria is now allowed back on the catwalks. But in London, her Spanish colleague Marina refuses to put on weight. She says she risks not getting gigs in other capitals if she tries to fit the Spanish mold. Uh, they have to understand that it's our job, you know, and the reason that we're skinny is because, you know, we are hangers, you know, like our shoulder are hangers. It's very beautiful, like a, sh a runway show with beautiful models and beautiful clothes, you know. But it's work, you know, it's not like actual life. The chief executive of British Fashion Week is Hilary River. She's fed up with the skinny controversy. The fashion industry should have, but it's she obviously says her much industry broader issue is not to blame. And the whole size zero um, thing has come from Hollywood, not from the catwalk. It's hard to see how Tinseltown can be blamed for stick-like models. But Hillary doesn't want to deal with the issue. Her press secretary, sitting next to her, has emphatically warned me not to ask any questions on the topic. But I want to know what, if anything, the British Fashion Council plans to do about it. Now what we have done um, is that we've discussed the issue with all of our designers and we've asked them, we've written to them and asked them to use only healthy models. Really beautiful headshot. And how old are you? 17. But Australia's Alice McCall, one of the, the designers at London's fashion show, doesn't know anything about the new guidelines. No, there were no guidelines set on me. I mean, and all the girls that we chose for our show were, were fantastic. Um, and it was, it's more of an instinctive thing to, for the models you choose. You know, they walk in the door and you pretty much know straight away if they're the girl for you. And it's, um, it's not, are they too skinny or not? It's, are they a great girl or not, you know? Your name again? Um, yeah. she's under At Alice's London apartment, she's busy casting. And skinny models? Well, it's not really a problem. 
there are so many poignant issues and I think that the issue to do with starvation, or, or not starvation, but, but um, nutrition, um, we should be looking at perhaps Africa and um, and looking at there's the, there's where the problem is all these Kenya or, or Somalia or uh, countries where where there's famines or you know um, and I think as far as I, I'm concerned and casting models it's um, really looking for just great looking girls that that are beautiful and obviously slim. Despite Spain's position on ultra-thin models, yeah, it's yeah, going to take yeah, a lot yeah. more than a few guidelines to change the fashion world's so addiction down, to down. their ideal of the perfect body. Sure, I've got a tiny little waist. Yeah, I guess it's a line, it's a silhouette, and yeah. it just it's yeah. Everyone's gone so crazy yeah. about it, which is like what I suppose the tabloids do. They take yeah. it and run with it, but that yeah. Until Sorry. then. It's but, um, on with the show. Yeah, but what we might um, sort of get um, keep on going with the casting. So Emma, I'd love to see you do do a walk.